Welcome into NBA Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. Appreciate all the real ones tuning in. And we have a cool and fun show planned for everybody. We're going to touch on the latest trade rumors surrounding the NBA because trade season is officially here. December 15th is the start of trade season because that's when players that sign an NBA free agency can then be traded. This is the time of year when the rumors start to come out. We've seen, seen them from Sham Sharanya. We've seen them from Woj. We've seen them from The Athletic. The rumors are heating up, and that's because December 15th is the start of NBA trade season. And with trades about to pop off, before those get going, I want to ask you guys this question. To name a player you think will get traded by the NBA trade deadline. We're going to go through 10 of those guys, 10 guys that I think could be on the move once the trade deadline gets here, but I want to hear from you first. Name a player you think that will get traded. Let's start out on the West Coast, and let's talk about the former second overall pick, and that being James Wiseman, a guy that I thought was going to be a great NBA player, and I still think he has that in him. Just, I'm not sure that the Golden State Warriors are the right place, and that's so important for when a player gets drafted in the NBA, any professional league. It's all about fit, and are they going to be able to reach their maximum potential at that spot? And Wiseman has just not been able to do that with the Golden State Warriors. He's played in just 12 games this year. He's been sent down to the G League. I don't know if it's a locker room thing, a teammate thing, an attitude thing. We know he's battled back from injury. Only playing in 12 games this year, though, even with the Warriors somewhat struggling, is kind of frustrating, I would feel like, for Wiseman. And doesn't make all that much sense to me. We know the kid is talented. He can score. He can put it on the deck. He can stretch the floor a little bit. He's got a nice, soft touch. He's just 21 years old, so I think a change of scenery for a guy like James, James Wiseman excuse me, makes a lot of sense. Let the kid go somewhere else, get the value that you can back for Wiseman, and maybe you look to make a trade for another one of these players on this list. I'm a fan of Wiseman. I want to see him reach his potential. I'm just not sure if he's going to do that with the Golden State Warriors. Let's go to another big man, so this time someone in the Eastern Conference, that being Miles Turner, <clears throat> the center for the Indiana Pacers. This has been a player that's been mentioned in trade rumors for the past couple of years. This is someone that I think is one of the best defensive bigs in the NBA. I call him a 3 and D big because that's what he does. He blocks shots, he protects the rim, and he can knock down threes. But Miles Turner, in my opinion, is going to be traded by the NBA trade deadline. And he said a couple of weeks ago in an interview that he wants to play for the Los Angeles Lakers. His time with Indiana is coming to a close. This is someone that's going to be a free agent this offseason, so Indiana knows that he's probably going to be gone. Makes sense for them to try to at least get an asset back for him in the trade market. I think Turner would be a great fit for the Los Angeles Lakers. Him and Anthony Davis in the front court can space the court and really play five out with LeBron James on it. There have been rumors about Lakers and uh, Miles Turner. We'll see what happens. I do think he ends up getting traded. Another guy that I also think will be traded sooner rather than later is Jay Crowder. A guy, the guy just did not want to play for the Phoenix Suns this year, and a lot of reasons for that. He hasn't played a game this year. He's not even with the team right now, and the rumors are currently heating up around the Milwaukee Bucks. There was a report that came out the other day that the Phoenix Suns and the Milwaukee Bucks have been in conversation about a potential trade sending Crowder to Milwaukee, and I think that makes a lot of sense. I think anyone or any team that is competing in the NBA and trying to get to the NBA Finals and can use a little bit of toughness, some defense, and some clutch three-point shooting, I think it makes a lot of sense for James, uh, excuse me, Jay Crowder. Here are some Jay Crowder destinations that I think make a lot of sense. The Lakers, another 3 and D guy, never hurts. The Boston Celtics, Crowder. Bring some toughness, some defense, and some more three-point uh, three shooting. I think the Dallas Mavericks also make sense. They could use another perimeter defender. They could use kind of that junkyard dog off the, on this team, add some toughness. That's what Jay Crowder is going to bring. Philly, he seems like a perfect player for the Philadelphia 76ers. They want to play defense, and they want to shoot threes. That's what he does at one of the highest levels in the NBA. And the Milwaukee Bucks, they have been linked most recently. So I want to ask you guys this question. Where do you think Jay Crowder is? gets traded. I think it's either going to be the Bucks or probably 
I think the Lakers are still involved. I think the Mavericks are sleepy, a sleeper team. I think it makes a lot of sense for what they need. But I want to hear for you from you. Type one for the Lakers, two for the Celtics, three for the Mavs, four for the Philadelphia 76ers, or five for the Milwaukee Bucks. A player that I just don't understand is always mentioned in trade rumors, and I'm a big fan of his game, is John Collins. This is someone that just hasn't been able to figure it out with Trey Young. There was reported beef last year between the duo. I mean, the Hawks are a mess at this current time. They went all in on the DeJounte Murray trade, trading three first-round picks, and it has made them a better team. But overall, it didn't really move the needle all that much. They're still a middle-of-the-pack team in the Eastern Conference. And now it sounds like John Collins wants out, and he doesn't want to play for the Hawks, and the Hawks don't want him anymore. This is an athletic four. He's a rim runner. He's shown the ability to knock down the outside shot. He's an okay defender. I think if you're a team looking to update, upgrade that power forward spot, I think John Collins makes a lot of sense. Another player that was already traded earlier this year. What about Boyan Bogdanovich, the small forward, as I like to call him, one of the best scorers in the NBA. Boyan is a professional scorer. This is someone that night in and night out just is a walking bucket. If you don't watch the guy play, you probably just think he's a three-point sniper, hangs around the perimeter and likes to get his three-point shot off, but that's really not his game. He can post you up, he could score with his back to the basket. He's a nice mid-range player. He could put the ball on the deck. I mean, the guy's averaging 21 points per game on 14 shots a night on one of the most efficient clips in the association, shooting 51% from the field and 44% almost from downtown. If I'm the Lakers, this is a guy I would try to get. I know the Dallas Mavericks have been linked to Boyan Bogdanovich. If you're looking for a guy that can add a little bit more scoring punch to your current roster and you're willing to maybe trade a first-round pick, I think Boyan Bogdanovich is one of the most interesting and I would say players that I think could change around a team. Look, you don't just find people on the streets that shoot 44% from three and get you 21 points per night. Boyan is a professional scorer. Uh, before we get to the rest of the trade targets, I want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, Rocket Money. Get hooked up with them and cancel unnecessary subscriptions by just the tap of a finger. Go to rocketmoney.com slash NBA now. Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost? Most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions when the actual cost is closer to $200 plus. That's right. You could be wasting hundreds of dollars each month on subscriptions you didn't even know about. There's this app I love using that takes care of that for me. It's called Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. The app shows you all your subscriptions in one place and then cancels for you whatever you don't still want. Rocket Money can even find subscriptions you didn't know you were paying for, and you may even find out you've been double charged for a subscription. To cancel a subscription, all you have to do is press cancel, and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. It's super easy because... And it's a very helpful tool as well. One, it's going to save you money, and it's going to save you time and hassle. Because when you have to cancel these subscriptions, you're on the phone, you're on the website, you're dealing with a whole bunch of stuff you don't want to be dealing with. Rocket Money, they'll take care of that for you. Shout out to them. I'm already saving big money with them since I got hooked up. You can do the same. Go to rocketmoney.com slash NBA now. That link is in the comments and description of today's show. A player that has also been mentioned in trade rumors. What about the shooter, or I guess the former shooter, of Duncan Robinson? Because this is a guy that just can't shoot the basketball anymore. He used to be a 44 and 47% shooter from outside. Now he's shooting 30% from downtown. And that's not the worst part about him. His contract might be the worst in basketball. It is horrible. This guy signed a five-year, $90 million deal prior to last season, and he's unplayable for the Miami Heat. You don't see Pat Riley and Spolster hand out those kind of contracts lightly, and this time they missed on it. Duncan Robinson is a player. He's been mentioned in trade rumors, but it's almost like you, the Heat are going to have to add assets to get rid of Duncan Robinson. So if you're a team that's struggling and you're tanking, but you're willing to take on more assets to eat up salary cap space, Duncan Robinson might be a guy that you're really interested in, and maybe if he can get back to being that elite shooter he once was, it might be a win-win if you make a move for the ex-shooter of the Heat. Really disappointing what happened to Duncan. What about another young scorer out in the Eastern Conference and plays 
basketball for the, the Detroit Pistons. Detroit basketball. I just wanted to say that. Sadiq Bay. I mean, the guy's a 23-year-old player, and he can get buckets. The guy's averaging 15 points per game. <clears throat> there's been rumors that he wants out of Detroit. It sounds like they're somewhat working on a trade. It just hasn't worked out. And look, they're not trying to win basketball games. If they can get a future pick for a guy that's going to hit free agency in a couple of years, why not do it? But if you want to take a flyer on a guy that can get you 15 a night and shoot it at an okay percentage but is somewhat inefficient, take a chance on him, get him in the right system, maybe you think he becomes a viable piece later down the line. I'd be interested in a Sadiq Bay trade if I was a rebuilding team. What about Christian Wood? I thought this was going to be a move when the Dallas Mavericks made it in the offseason that was going to catapult them to being a solid team in the West after they lost Jalen Brunson to one of the best. I thought that could have been the Robin to Luka Doncic's Batman. And I don't want to say it completely hasn't worked out, but it hasn't lived up to the expectations that a lot of people have. I mean, the guy's still having a great season. We'll show those stats here in a second, but sounds like he's upset with his current role. He wants to be a starter. They have him coming off the bench wanting to be a high-energy guy. And really, that's just not his game. He's just a guy that gets buckets and does it at an extremely high clip. I mean, the guy's averaging 16.7 rebounds, 54% shooting, and 40% from downtown. I like Christian Wood a lot. Sometimes it's just about fit. I think they will find a way to figure it out in Dallas. The guy is just too talented to not get major minutes. Look at the production. He's matching what he's getting paid. I think it was a great trade by the Mavs. I'd give it some more time before I punted on a guy like Wood. You don't find seven-footers that can give you eight rebounds and shoot 40% from downtown, and that's what Wood is. He's a solid player. If he is traded, I expect him to have a lot of trade interest. And if a trade goes down with Wood or anybody on this list, we're going to be breaking it down on this channel, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. We put out videos almost every single day, on the not just the NBA. NBA, college football, NFL, XFL, if it's a sport, we cover it here on the channel. Help us get to 400,000 subscribers. Go down right now, hit that big red button. What about one of the bigger names in the NBA right now? A guy that's just on a team that really doesn't have a direction. He was benched a couple of days ago, or I guess that was a week ago at this point, Zach Levine, and he spoke to the media and said, I'm the kind of guy that you play down the stretch. The Bulls are just mid. They are what they are. They're not good. They're not bad. They're mid. And it's because of injury. You look at a guy like Lonzo Ball, not having him changes the whole dynamic of that team because we can you have Lonzo, Levine, and DeRozan with Caruso off the bench. That's a great backcourt. That's a defensive-minded backcourt. Right now, the Bulls are just full of chuckers, and they're not a bunch of full makers. And when you look at this contract for Zach Levine, he signed that Supermax in the offseason, it's a lot of money for a guy like Zach Levine, who's also had knee injuries in the past. But maybe if you're a team like the New York Knicks, Woj talked about it, said that the, the Knicks will definitely be looking at the Bulls situation. If you're looking to go star hunting, I don't even know if he is a star. I think he got tiers superstar, star, and all-star. And I think he's closer to all-star than star in any of those tiers. I like Levine. He's usually a 50, 40, 90 guy. But the contract, the knees, and not really being a great defensive player makes me wonder, do I really want to pay $90 million for a player in its final two years? I don't think I do. What about Tobias Harris, Toby, for the Philadelphia 76ers? A player that has talent. He's a good player. No doubt about it. I just sometimes wonder if he's in the right system. I feel like if he played for a bad team, this is a guy that could average 25 for night, for, per night, and he's having a good season. He's averaging like 17, 18 points per game, shooting 40% from downtown. But if you're going to move him, it's just like Levine. It's just like Robinson. It's going to come down to this contract. Last year, he was making $35 million. This year, he's making 38. Next year, he's making 39. Then he'd be an unrestricted free agent in 2024. I'm not sure if the Sixers love to fit with him because he's kind of a tweener. And a tweener can be a good thing and a bad thing. And I think in this situation, it's not the best because he's not really a wing and he's not really a power forward, but he plays best at that small ball four, which I'd like to actually see the Sixers do a little bit more of. But he's a scorer. He can get buckets. I think in a more 
of a role where he could put the ball on the deck and actually be a scorer, he would be more useful. I just wonder if that would result for wins for a team trading for him. I think the Sixers are going to be in the trade market looking to make a big trade and try to get that third star over to Philadelphia. I do want to close with this because we're doing a survey here at Chat Sports, and we're thinking about starting more NBA channels. So I want to hear from you. Who is your favorite team down in the comment section? Let us know. Maybe we'll start a channel with your favorite team. Also, give me a follow on Twitter at Marshall Green underscore. I'm tweeting about the NBA, the NFL, a lot of stuff over on Twitter. I think I'm a pretty cool follow. My mom says the same. Give me a follow at Marshall Green underscore.